So welcome to um, Extra Help from Mr. A's channel and today I'm going to do a little bit of a geometry review. So I made it kind of look like a crown because hopefully by the end of this you will be a king or queen at geometry. One of the expectations in the Ontario curriculum for grade 6 students is that they understand how to draw an isometric drawing, which is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. So as you can see right here, we have our three-dimensional object constructed out of Lincoln cubes and some isometric dot paper. If you wanted to practice this at home, um, I would recommend trying out the website Incompetech, I-N-C-O-M-P-E-T-E-C-H dot com, and you can actually generate um, a sheet of paper like this, they have a, at that website there's a graph paper section. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how to draw this. Uh, notice that my paper is not uh, in the vertical orientation, it's in the horizontal one uh, because of the arrangement of the dots. If you have it vertically, it's not going to look correct. So what I'm going to do is I have it angled so that my vertical lines are here, here, and here, those are the main ones I'm thinking about right now. And I have those facing directly towards towards the camera. So I'm just going to pick a corner at random to start from. Uh, I usually like to start from a bottom of a vertical line because our vertical lines are the easiest ones to draw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from this corner right here, the bottom corner, bottom front corner of the pink cube. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dot here indicating that's where I'm starting. Okay, now I'm going to count up how high this block is. And this block is one block high. So on our page that corresponds to one dot. Next, I am going to connect that with a straight line. Notice I'm using a straight edge here, to, trying to keep it neat. Okay, and so that line that I've just drawn corresponds with this corner. Okay. Now the interesting thing about triangular dot paper or isometric dot paper is you'll notice that the horizontal lines um, are really far, are really spaced quite far apart. Because what you want to be doing is you want to be using the diagonals to show your lefts and rights. You don't want it to um, be actually horizontal and flat. And that's a big problem that a lot of students have. They end up making flat lines and they wonder why their drawing doesn't look 3D. It's because you're using a horizontal line. You need to be using diagonal lines, and uh, you'll see in a few moments just how uh, well it actually represents this object that I've created. So next, I'm going to go back to my starting point, which again corresponds to this corner right here, and I'm going to see how far it is from here to here. And again, that's just one cube, so I'm going to count out one space. So I'm going to go to the next dot here, put a dot, and then connect them. Okay. Now I've bought uh, now I've drawn the uh, bottom edge of that that cube or that's that the face of that cube. Okay? Uh, again, it's one up from there. And so that line that I just what I've drawn so far actually is this, this and this line, okay? And then I'm just going to connect the two dots at the very top of it. And voila. I've got the uh, that whole face of that uh, cube drawn. Uh, next, I'm going to go back to my original starting point, and then I'm going to count out how far it is from here to here, and it is two blocks, so that corresponds with two dots on our page. So we one dot, two dot, draw a dot here, and then we just connect them. Oops. And I've drawn that bottom side. I'm going back to the original uh, first line, and I count in how many? Counting one, which corresponds to one on the sheet. Connect those dots, and then here we go. One in. And 
then finally one back here. It's really important that you count how far the blocks are um, and that's really going to help you out as you're drawing these shapes. Now uh, rather than do this whole thing and record it because that would be a, quite a long and boring video, I'm going to pause it in just a second uh, and then we'll come back to it. Um, just really quickly this corner right here again corresponds with this corner here. Um, how far out does it come? It comes one out, so we go in the op the different direction here, um, and it should look like that. Okay, uh, it's one up at that corner. So this line right here corresponds to this line here, and uh, I'm going to pause this, and we're going to come back, and I'll show you exactly uh, how it looks in just a moment. So now I've got my figure drawn. Um, as you can see, I've chosen this side of the uh, figure. Uh, I've colored that in red, and I've called that my front side. Um, these ends I've colored, um, I guess, sort of greenish, and I've called those the side view, and then the orange represents the top of the figure. Okay, so orange is top, red is front, green is side. This comes into play in just a moment when I'm going to show you how to do just a drawing of the top view and just a drawing of the front view and just a drawing of the side view. So last but not least I'm going to show you how to do the top, front, and side views of an object. Now as you can see I've rearranged my camera so that we now see only the top or hopefully just the top of our figure. And you'll notice that it looks sort of like a sideways L. And that's exactly what we're going to draw. We're going to use our grid paper now to draw the top view of this figure. So I notice that it's two blocks right here. That corresponds with these, this length right here by three blocks this way. And I'm keeping the color consistent with my other drawing just to make it a little bit more clear for you. You can find that if you use color, it's a lot easier to show which angle or which sides are which. I, I really encourage students to do it in multiple colors or at least in different shading patterns so that it's really easy for your teacher to see exactly what side is what. So now we have our L shape. But you'll notice that it's really flat looking and there's no way of, that a viewer can see that it's 3D. There is a way to show um, different height changes. Okay, So this block is lower than this block. Same with this block. It's lower than this block. So how do we show it? We show it with a thick line where the, um, the height changes. So the height changes between this one and this one. So the line between there we're going to make a little bit darker. And the same with this one right here. So notice I'm not showing where each individual block is. The only lines that I'm adding are where the height changes. So this is a low one, these two are higher, and that one's low. There's no way of knowing that these ones are higher or lower than this until you look at the other views. So I'm just going to label this top view. Okay. Next I'm going to flip it on its side. And so now we see the front of the object and I'm going to draw that right now. So I'm going to keep the color consistent again and so we've got two uh, blocks this way. So I'm going to draw that. Okay, two at the top there. Okay, one down there. One over. One down. And then three over. Double check just to make sure. So three, two, two, one, one, one. And three, two, two, one, one, one. Just finish up my line here. Okay, and then you can probably guess what we need to do now. We need to indicate that this block is higher than the surrounding ones. 
So again, to show the altitude change or the height change, we just make sure that those lines are marked. And that's the front view. Last but not least, we're going to flip it on its side. And that's the side view of it. And so I'll get my aqua marine sort of color here. And we'll put side view. Okay. And you'll notice that just sort of looks like a backwards L, three blocks. So it's um, one here, two here, two up, one over, one down, and one over. And again, last thing we want to do is we want to indicate that this block is at a different height than both of these. And so we put a thick line here and a thick line there. And those are our three views. Now, for someone who didn't know what type of shape we were looking at, what you can do is you can use these views to assemble a figure. So I like to start from the top. It's just the way I do it. So I'm going to take these blocks and I'm going to make them, I'm not going to care about the lines here, uh, um, the, the height changes. I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm just going to get the overall shape, which looks like this L. Okay, so that's the top view. I know that overall, if I look at my object from the top, it's going to look like that. Now we're going to flip to our front. So I look at this now at my front and I say, okay, uh, this must be how it's different in height from from that corresponds with this block right here. So already I've got that drawn. And what do I need to add to it? Well, I need to add two blocks here. So now I've got something that meets my top view, which is my sort of L shape. I've got something that meets my front view. And I'm going to go back and take a look at my side. And do I need to change anything? No. So that is exactly the type of shape that you will want or that you're looking for when you build this. And thank you very much. I hope this has been helpful. Um, this is a little tricky. I definitely recommend coloring in the sides of your figure differently so that you're able to more clearly show um, what your top, front, and side views are. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.